Tell me right now. What am I? Did I kill Ben? No. Do I know who killed Ben? No. Did Don kill Ben? No. Do I know anything about the murder? No. Were you and Don in any way involved in the planning of the death of Ben? No. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Benjamin Oxley. Viewer discretion is advised. In the early morning hours of February 21st, 2008, Minden, Nevada 911 received this phone call. Where's your husband at? He's in our room. He's laying next to me. Okay, is he awake? No, he's dead. He's dead. Mm -hmm. So you think somebody came in and shot him? Yeah. <laughs> okay, did you see anybody? No, not at all. Do you know where the oh, gun is? Is the gun laying by your husband? Right next to him. I haven't even looked. Were you laying next to your husband when this happened? Yeah, I was. I was sleeping. And I heard this odd noise. And, like something hit me in the head and I was like, well, that's weird. So I get up and I'm like, I smell gunpowder. And I get up and I'm like, babe, babe, did you hear that? And then I thought he had gotten sick. I was like, babe, he got sick. And I turned on the light because I just see the funnel right next to me. Okay, and you said the front door is open? Mm-hmm. And was the front door open when you went to bed? No. What, is the front door normally unlocked? Um, yes. Did you hear any vehicles take off or anything? No. No. Okay, so when you woke up, you didn't you didn't see anybody running? You didn't hear no. anybody running? No. It took me a minute to, like, register, like, to think of the heck going on. Mm -hmm. Do you have weapons in the house? Um, yeah. My brother's room. Okay, what kind of weapons are typically in the house? Oh, no, he has cannon guns, and I don't think they're normally in the house. I think they're normally in the garage. That was Melissa Oxley, who was telling 911 that her husband, Ben, had been shot to death while he was asleep in bed. When police arrive, they find a very, very bloody crime scene. The 36-year-old man, Ben Oxley, was lying in his bed on his stomach, and he was just covered in blood. His wife, Melissa, had some blood and brain matter kind of splattered onto her clothing. Benjamin's young daughter was in her bedroom and staying at the house with Ben and Melissa was Melissa's brother, whose name was Craig. The interesting thing about Craig though, is when police arrived and they were kind of going from room to room, they went into Craig's bedroom and they saw covers covering his bed and it looked like a lump inside the bed and it looked like someone was in it. They're calling for that person to get up to please make themselves known, but they're not responding. So one of the officers goes over and starts like nudging this lump in the bed and Craig suddenly kind of just wakes up. He apparently did not hear the gunshot go off and he was sound asleep in bed when this all happened. While looking in Craig's bedroom, they found a couple of shotgun shells on top of a, uh, a dresser in his room. They would later find out that Ben was actually shot and killed with a shotgun, but that weapon was not found anywhere in the home or around the property. They did find guns inside the garage, but I, from what I understand, eventually they were tested and shown not to be the murder weapon. Melissa Oxley was had her hands bagged, as did Craig, and they were given gunshot residue tests on their hands. Both of them would end up passing those tests, meaning there was no gunshot residue on either of their hands, meaning that they either did not shoot a gun or they had thoroughly washed their hands if they did, in fact, sh shoot a gun. Police would then bring Melissa in for questioning, and this is just a segment of her interrogation. The problems they're, they're there is if you're just a random murder, why don't they take you out? I mean, you're right there. Like the exactly. Why did they leave a witness right there? was facing them when they pulled the train. I, I was so asleep, like I sleep down. So Melissa basically states that she was a very, very sound sleeper. She heard what she thought was just like a really loud bang and she was, she awoke from it and then she tried to alert her husband, but he wasn't responding. She then turned on the lights essentially and found that there was blood everywhere. They asked her a question that I think is a pretty good question. 
hey, if you weren't the shooter, how come you weren't shot? Why was Ben the only one shot? And she essentially says, I don't know. But with no physical evidence pointing towards her and no physical evidence pointing towards Craig, while some of their stories to police seemed a little strange, a little off, the guns found in the home and the ammunition they found in Craig's room, none of it were matches to the murder weapon or the bullets that were used in the murder. So at that point, both of them were cleared. Another thing that was interesting was that the front door to the home was open when all of this occurred, when police arrived. They asked them, like, hey, do you normally keep your door open like that? And they're like, obviously, no. Okay, well, do you keep your door unlocked? And Melissa said, we do. Which, folks, let's let's not do that. I mean, just lock your doors at night. Don't make it easy for killers to get into your home. They questioned Ben's six-year-old daughter, who was from another uh, marriage, another relationship. She was not Melissa's daughter, but Melissa treated her like she was her own child. She was she was a really good stepmom. And Alyssa says she remembers waking up in the middle of the night and she saw a dark figure walking down the hallway, but she doesn't re didn't really recall who that person was. When police were asking Melissa, do you know who could have done this? Who may be responsible? And Melissa, and she said it could either be Ben's ex, Don, who is also the mother of his six-year-old daughter, or it could possibly be Don's, uh, I guess, sort of boyfriend or live-in roommate boyfriend person. And that guy's name is James Matlean. So police go to Don's house and they question Don and they question James. Well, Don and James says they had been home that entire evening and they were drinking and they were watching movies. They weren't each other's alibis. And so police couldn't really confirm it. But at first they were like, okay, we kind of, I guess we have to believe you right now. Well, Ben and Don did not, their relationship did not end well. And Don was very noticeably upset when Ben got full custody of their six-year-old daughter, Alyssa. She was not happy with this at all. So could this have been the motive? Could Don wanted Ben dead because to get her daughter back? Alyssa, when all of this happened, was sent back to live with her mom, Don, because Melissa was not her biological mother. By the way, I forgot to mention, there was a $400,000 life insurance policy that would have, I think, been paid out to Melissa, which Melissa was not forthcoming about initially at the beginning parts of this investigation. But they, again, like I said, they determined that she just physically had no way of doing this. But like Don would not have received any of this money. All eyes, even though they they don't have physical proof yet, all eyes are pointing towards Don and this other guy, James. Digging deeper into it, in the, you know, they had already found out that Don was unhappy, but they also found out that Don was having to pay a monthly child support to Ben, and it was a substantial amount of money. And again, she hated that. She did not like the fact that she had to do that. But their alibis, right? What about their alibis? They said they were at home watching movies and drinking. Well, Police did some thorough checking into this and they actually found some CCTV footage from a nearby 7-Eleven that showed James Matlean at the 7-Eleven at a point in the evening where he said he had never left the house that night whatsoever. He told them, he swore to them, I never left the house. But now they have him in a lie because he did. He's on camera. This would prompt them to essentially put surveillance on Don and James. They would tail them. They would watch their every move. They would listen in on phone calls. They would do a lot. And when they brought James in for questioning, he, he was adamant. He denied having anything to do with this. Okay, uh, you caught me in a lie. Our alibis didn't check out, but I didn't do this. I didn't kill him. Then Dawn comes back in for a second round of questioning. As a matter of fact, she volunteered to come in. They didn't ask her to come back in. And she says, I'm ready to, to spill. I, I know what happened to Ben. She told police that she had been constantly expressing her anger at Ben to James that she never actually asked James to kill Ben. That if James did it, he did it on his own. He did this without, you know, her having to ask him to do it. The problem is, is during this particular round of questioning, Dawn was incredibly drunk. She was, they could tell without a doubt she was intoxicated. So was she telling the truth? Well, in November of 2009, Don, who had another son, a 16-year-old, his name was Devin, he would go to police and tell them a story. He actually would rat his own mom out, and he said that he overheard a conversation that Don, his mom, had asked James to murder Ben with a shotgun, which is exactly how he died. 
but they did not have concrete physical evidence to show that Don actually said this. They only had the circumstantial evidence and word of a 16 year old. Granted, this was his mom he was talking about, but they, they still needed actual proof. And so I think they realized that they may not ever find that proof. So they brought Don back in and said, listen, we will give you immunity. We will not prosecute you for any involvement in this case if you tell us what you know about James. And so she agreed to testify against him. <laughs> So they bring James back in for questioning, and then this is a segment of his next round of questioning. Am I going to be under arrest for murder? I can't promise you to tell you you won't. Do you have evidence that I murdered somebody? James, yes, I have information in this case that says you were involved in this murder. Absolutely. Then I pulled the trigger. I didn't say that. I want you to be honest with me. If you did, then let's talk about that. Jesus Christ, I'm not talking. I did, did not kill you him. You keep, you keep focusing on that. It's because I'm freaked the fuck out, that. man. I don't understand why... I don't know what you've been told or what you've heard. I did not kill him. But you were involved in it. No. Do you know about it? I know of what I've been told. That is it. Do you know who did it? No. I don't know. I, what, what boggles my mind is what you've heard. Who out there is so mad at me that they're saying something? James, you and Don have been inseparable for the last however long. You told me that you weren't having sex with her. She wasn't your girlfriend, you weren't sleeping with her, all that stuff. That's another lie that you made to me, okay? Am I right? Why do you have reasons to cover that up? You know, this bullshit you guys just pulled right here is what pisses me off. I, I want to I wanna tell you to fuck off. I can understand that. This bullshit I told you on the phone or on the message, I will talk to you if I have a lawyer That's present. Fine. And you have an opportunity to. If you want one here now, I have no. Make a phone call. I told you I have no problem talking to you, but you guys are harassing everybody. It's bullshit. Tell me right now. Yes. What am I? Did I kill Ben? No. Do I know who killed Ben? No. Did Don kill Ben? No. Do I know anything about the murder? No. Were you and Don in any way involved in the planning of the death of Ben? No. Okay. I'm looking you in your eyes. Doesn't mean I did not kill him. James, I had nothing to do with this. Because you're staring me down does not mean that you didn't do it. Obviously, he's still denying it. He's still saying, I had nothing to do with it. Don had nothing to do with it. None of us had anything to do with it. He was belligerent. He was very vocal towards police, which I guess, you know, if you if you're trying to convince people that you are being falsely accused of a crime, then maybe you, you probably would be that way. But then when James found out about Don had spilled the entire thing and pointed all of the, the blame on him and pointed all the fingers at him, he then said, well, Don was much more involved than she said she was. He says that Don actually drew a map of the house that Ben lived in and pointed to the room where Ben lived. And then James says, and guess what? Don didn't just ask me to kill Ben. She also asked me to kill Melissa. Melissa was supposed to die that night as well. But James says he freaked out, he panicked, and he got scared. And so he just took off. Police would find a shotgun in a shed on James's property that he kept claiming, oh, it's a locked shed. I don't have access to it. Only my mom has access to it. But they found the murder weapon inside that shed. So on March 16th, 2012, James Matleen would plead guilty to the murder of Ben Oxley. And in order to, this is mainly to take the death penalty off the table, he would end up being sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Unbelievably, Dawn would never be prosecuted for this murder because she had immunity on the table. Even though this was likely all started by Dawn and that Dawn had orchestrated this, that she told him where Ben was, that this never would have happened if Dawn hadn't asked him to kill Ben, obviously, but Dawn got away with it. Dawn got to, basically, she got to continue living her life, free as a bird. Not totally free, she would eventually be arrested for something completely unrelated. She got busted for drug issues involving another one of her teenage children, and she was like sentenced to 90 months in prison and was released in 2014. But no, she never faced any repercussions, she never faced anything for this murder which is complete bullshit because obviously it's not happening without her.
But I think but because police just didn't have physical evidence, they didn't have like a paper trail, they didn't have money being transferred. All they had is the word of a 16-year-old and the word of the now-confessed murderer trying to potentially take blame off of himself and put it elsewhere, which is an accurate thing. I mean, he probably did do this because Don asked him to, but that's not proof all in its own unfortunately. And so Don, in my opinion, Don got away with murder. I don't think there was ever any doubt that James was the killer here, that he was the one who physically broke into the house and pulled the trigger, or he didn't break in, he just walked in. There was no doubt in that. There was no doubt that, you know, they don't think Don physically pulled the trigger. So the person who actually killed Ben Oxley, this completely loving and caring father who was described as spirited and outgoing. He was an unbelievably giving person. He would always help others who were in need. He was basically everybody's friend. If you met him, you were automatically his friend. That's the kind of good person that he was. He was just warm and inviting. And his daughter would say that he was just the greatest dad a person could have. That, and she absolutely adored him, and she was the entire world to him. And because one woman was pissed off that Ben was getting custody of their daughter, because quite frankly, she was a shit person. I mean, she got, she was in trouble with the law often. And also James Matlene had a previous criminal history. And she just said, you know what? I don't like the fact that she is with him only and so i want her back and the only way that she thought she could do that is to have him killed and so she orchestrated it and she just took out this this amazing guy who did nothing wrong unless you consider him being a, a kind generous and loving father as being wrong then okay I know that Alyssa ended up growing up, you know, now in a, in a good house with people who actually care about her and love her and won't kill her family members just to have her in her, their lives. So while Don got away with essentially orchestrating the murder, the person who pulled the trigger was sentenced to life in prison and will never be able to hurt an innocent person ever again. Ben may not have gotten complete and full justice since Don is still out there. The fact that his actual physical murderer is in prison forever, in some way, uh, he did get the justice that he very much rightfully deserved. But that is it for this case, true crime, a Rooney Dooney Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, please subscribe, give this video a like, and share the video if you want to on other platforms. Also, you can follow me over on TikTok where I tell short form true crime stories on two different pages. Uh, the links to both of those pages are in the link tree in the description of this video below. And in that link tree, you will also find my merch store. We sell like t-shirts and hoodies. We do ship all over the entire world. So there you go. So check it out if you want. And then lastly, if there's a case you want me to cover, just send me a super duper quick email to my email, which is also listed below. Just send me the name of the individual or the case, where it happened and when it happened. I'll add it to the list, which is over 6,200 names long. I pick my cases, I cover each time at random, so I cannot promise you when I'll cover that case, but I will get to it eventually. I promise, I swears it. So yeah, feel free to do that if you want. The list, by the way, is public. It's also in the link tree. You can scroll through it. It's alphabetical for the most part. So if you wanna check for a name first, it might already be on there. But at any rate, that is it for this video, True Crime Aroonies. We shall see you for the next case. And until then, cha-cha for now. It's this mic, not this. It, oh, idiot. Ta- Ta-ta for now, True Crime. This is awkward. This is just, I, can I erase this previous video and, 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 and redo this? No, they haven't invented that technology yet. So I have to leave in my stupid, ow, my stupid screw ups and dumb stuff because erasing things isn't possible. As we all know, doi. <laughs> anyway, I'm a low key idiot. Yes, by the way, I have a scratch on my forehead. If you hadn't seen other videos where I mentioned it, um, I picked a fight with a nail sticking out of a wall and I kicked nothing's ass. It kicked my ass and left uh, a mark on my head forever. It's never gonna go away. That's how medicine and science works. You know, I can't stop it. I can't fix it. What can you do anyway? 
Jesus. Okay, what was I doing? Oh, I was saying goodbye. Ta-ta for now, true crime, Rudies. Uh-huh.